हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज ए क्लास फॉर बी ए पार्ट टू इंग्लिश लिटरेचर वी विल बी स्टडिंग मैकबेथ नाउ एंड टूडेज लेक्चर विल बी ऑन द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ मैकबेथ द प्ले बाय शेक्सपियर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल टॉक अबाउट द डेट ऑफ कंपोजिशन ऑफ मैकबेथ ऑल दो द डेट ऑफ कंपोजिशन ऑफ मैनी ऑफ शेक्सपियर्स प्लेज is uncertain there is a fake there is a fake fake degree of certainty that macbeth was written in 1606 it was first performed before james i the king of england and his royal guests it has also been suggested that the play was written with james tastes in the mind such as his interest in his native country scotland and his pride in his own lineage shakespeare's object in pleasing king james was to promote the fortunes of his art company which in 1603 been named the king's men in the list of shakespeare's plays macbeth comes after othello hamlet major for major and before antony and cleopatra and cariolanus and now we talk about the sources of the play from where shakespeare has taken his material to write this play shakespeare got the story for his play from holland shades chronicles of england scotland and ireland this is the book from where he has taken his plots many plots holland shades work was a historical compilation which provided shakespeare with much of the material for the 10 plays that were grounded under the heading histories macbeth was entitled a tragedy king king james probably looked upon the play as history but it is not actually history the material in this play is of the kind that is called legendary rather than historical so certain in- incidents resembling historical ones might have been used by shakespeare in other words the play does not contain factual history additional sources for shakespeare's plays have been suggested these are william stewart's book of chronicles of scotland this is one of the book and buckland's history of scotland the other book the main source however is undoubtedly holland shades chronicles you have to remember this because whenever a question is asked you have to say the main source of macbeth is chronicles of england by holland shade although shakespeare has uh, put his own imagination uh, to write this play now we talk about the salient features of the play main features of the play and in these features first of all we will discuss about the supernatural elements there are four scenes in the play in which we meet certain supernatural characters in the very opening scene of the play we meet three witches who make certain prophecies prophecies means predictions relating to macbeth and banco prophecies on the entire uh, the, the play hangs on the uh, uh, prophecies of these witches then in act 3 scene 5 and then act 4 and scene 1 we meet hicket the goddess of witchcraft besides the three witches themselves apart from their role in the action of the play these supernatural characters impart a very strange kind of character to the play and they enhance its horror and besides the supernatural characters we have in the play brief accounts of certain supernatural happenings omens portents prodigies etc we can 
also have an account of the supernatural powers of healing and of prophecy with which Edward the Confessor, the English king, credited. There was an English king named Edward the Confessor who could heal people by simply touching. This, this is uh, believed in England. In, in England. Macbeth can also be studied as an, an, as a study of evil. In philosophical and moral terms, this play may be described as a study of evil. In fact, the play has been called Shakespeare's most profound and mature vision of evil. The play centers on a struggle between the individual and the forces of evil in the world. It is also a study of damnation. Damnation means when, uh, when you go to hell because of your evil deeds. Evil has in it the seeds of self-destruction. This is what the play demonstrates. Both Macbeth and his wife Lady Macbeth are portrayed in such a way to drive this point forcefully home to our hearts. The witches who prophesied that Macbeth will become the king of Scotland are embodiments of evils. And whereas Macbeth is an embodiment of uh, ambition, one of the uh, elements of tragic flower. Atmosphere of terror is another point on which we can talk. Terror is one of the dominant feelings produced by almost all the tragedies. But in this play, an atmosphere of terror pervades in the whole play. The part played by the witches and by the portents in the in, in producing terror has already been indicated. But terror is produced also by the imagery, by the use of dramatic irony and by the diabolical deeds, the very evil deeds and the agonizing experiences of the two main characters, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. There are so many killings in the play that the constant effect of terror is felt throughout the play even in the conversations of the major characters, you can feel the atmosphere of terror. And the play is significant from the point of view of the two major characters, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. The true greatness of the play actually depends, of course, upon the Shakespeare's unforgettable portrayal of the hero villain, you can say anti-hero, and his female counterpart, Lady Macbeth. Macbeth is the hero who becomes a criminal. He, uh, he starts his career by committing a crime, not willingly or readily, but with reluctance, unwillingness and anguish. And he manages to retain some of our sympathies even when he has become the hardened dictator and ruthless tyrant. Lady Macbeth is perhaps the most forceful of Shakespeare's female characters. Her inhumanity at the beginning and her essential femininity afterwards combine to produce a figure of rare psychological interest. The spectacle of the development of character in both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth is highly engrossing. There are so many contrasts which interest us in the play. The play shows these striking contrasts of which the most conspicuous is between the good and evil. The witches represent the principle of evil and we meet them in the very opening scene. Among human beings, Evil is represented by Lady Macbeth and in contrast in, in the course of time by Macbeth himself. 
The principle of goodness is personified in such characters as Malcolm, Macduff, Banquo, and above all, the King, Duncan. Another noteworthy contrast is that between appearance and reality, Duncan admires the beauty of Macbeth's castle and its surroundings without realizing that it is the place where he will be murdered. Likewise, Duncan has been deceived by the Thane of Cowder on whom he had built so much of trust. Macbeth is deceived by the fair promises and assurances of the witches whose reality is actually they are fins only. He learns in the end of the play. Lady Macbeth appears at first to rise above the weakness of her female or feminine sex, but is soon found to be essentially a woman with all of woman's weaknesses. She is as frail as any woman can be. And the play is very remarkable for its soliloquy. You all know soliloquy means the, the expression of one person when he is alone. Actually, he reads his own mind aloud for the audience. Both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth make a number of soliloquies which are essential to our understanding of their characters and the inner state of their minds. The soliloquy is used by Shakespeare as a means of revelation of secret working of the minds of his principal characters. The psychological value of the soliloquies in this play, as in other plays of Shakespeare, is very great. Besides, the soliloquies contain some of the greatest poetry of Shakespeare. They are a means of advancing the action of the play in some cases. The imagery is also very important to note when we read uh, Macbeth. Macbeth is believed to contain a more varied and more highly imaginative imagery than any other play of Shakespeare. There is in it a recurrent use of garment imagery. There are images of sounds echoing and re-echoing. There are images of light and darkness. There are images of sickness and disease and blood, images of rapid motion, images of unnaturalness, of Macbeth's crime, and so on. The vividness of all Shakespeare's imagery and the originality of his imagery are well-known facts. And last but not the least, very important feature of this play is the use of dramatic irony. There are a large number of instances showing an effective use of dramatic irony in this play. All the praises showered on Macbeth in the early scenes of the play. Every character seems to be full of praises for Macbeth in the beginning are only one example because later on, Macbeth proves himself a traitor. Duncan's compliments to Lady Macbeth when he is received by her at her castle are another example, because he does not know, while we know what is really in her mind. She actually is determined to get Duncan killed. The use of dramatic irony heightens the emotional effect which is dramatist's main aim to produce them. In the case of this play, the effect is horror. That's all for today. Thank you very much.